hungered by the finest chefs. But if you have filled your belly with junk food, the table will be untouched. And really the Lord would say to us, I have so much more I want to teach, I want to show you than what you have yet taken a hold of. But when you fill your mind and your soul with the carnal, the fleshly, the worldly, that's just going to pass away. I will not place before you a table filled with the food and the revelation because your heart could not receive it. God has so much more. He has so much more for you and I. He wants us to have a revelation of who he is and what he's done and what he can do. But he can't do it as long as you're satisfied with the rubbish of this world. Say, Lord, I want more of you and less of this world. I want all of you and none of me. Let's get into the word. Open your Bibles, if you will, to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11. I understand they had a wonderful time here yesterday in leadership training from Brother Angel. He's also going to be not, do another training session in, on April the May the 19th. You say, well, I'm not a leader. Well, I believe that God's called us all to be examples. On the 20th of February, I had a supernatural visitation. The Lord's opened the door. I've been out ministering and preaching on that this week. I've, I've gone, I've done three other services, and I'm doing another service tonight at another church, and God is showing up in a powerful way. When I step out of this pulpit, I step into an apostolic mantle. I cannot explain it to you. Here I'm a pastor, but there I'm apostolic. And he begins to pour the revelation through me, for he said, out of your belly would flow rivers of living water. Years ago, as God began to take me in and show me things of the Spirit, I tried to share them with people, but they were not ready. And it about broke my heart because I said, Lord, I know these truths will bring your people into a place, a position where all things would be possible. And it actually takes me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, where it says, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. I believe with all my heart that we have come into a time where God is going to begin to supernaturally cause us to grow up. And all of a sudden, all the trinkets and all the things and all the Worldly materialism is just going to be nothing but rubbish. See, Jesus said in John 10:10, 10, 10, I am come. And he told us why. I am come, the great I am, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the one who set the Israelites free from the bondage of Pharaoh. For many have not yet seen or understood that they are slaves of the God of this world, and yet they are my people. They've allowed the things of this world to crowd out the things of heaven. Their eyes have grown so dim and so dark they cannot see beyond their nose. All they care about is the material things of this world. But I perceive within my heart, within my soul, that God is about to send forth his lightning and his thunder. I perceive that God is going to begin to send a mighty rain, an awesome blowing of the wind of the Spirit. I perceive that even as the scales fell off of the eyes of Saul of Tarsus, and he was made a paw, and the next day he went to preaching. I believe and I perceive within my heart we have come into a time when God is going to begin to show up and reveal himself to those who are hungry and thirsty. 
I have joy in my heart. I've walked in this place before. And then I allowed myself to be deceived, to walk away from a place of living in the spirit because people would not receive. And yet it was my foolishness. You understand there is no end to the depth, the height, the width, and the length of Christ. You can have all that you want, and now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Christ said, I am come that you might have life. Point your finger at your neighbor and say he's talking to you. That you might have a life, and the life he's talking about is not the carnal, the fleshly, the material, money and wealth and fame and jewels and cars and houses and these things. The life he's talking about is that which is in heaven. Joy unspeakable and full of glory, peace that passes understanding, love that never fails. Huh? Gentleness and meekness, the character of Christ, his holiness and the fear of the Lord. It is available for anyone who wants it. God will give you the desires of your heart, but the problem is we've been asking for the wrong things. And even in the modern day church, I'm not here to attack them, but all they are doing is teaching people how to be self-centered. They're not teaching people how to become completely obsessed, possessed, and consumed in love for Jesus. But if I do not love Christ with all of my heart, all of my soul, with all of my mind, because that's the first commandment, and every fiber in my being, with every breath of my lungs, with every beat of my heart, I want to love him with all that I am and all that I've got. As you begin to press into that place, and some would call it the Holy of Holies, all of a sudden God will begin to show up, and he'll begin to reveal himself, because he loves them that love him. And it's not coming to Christ that you might get a trinket. It's not coming to Christ that you might get something. You're just in a hurry to give him everything because he already gave his all. He said, no man takes my life, I lay it down. And he'll not take your life unless you offer it to him. Pastor, you might say, how in the world could I love God with all that I am and all that I have? Don't you know I've got things I must do? Let me tell you, as you go about your daily business, you will be more productive. You will be more beneficial. You will be better off than you ever were before. But you have to do what Paul said. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Many people, I said this last week, are like a black hole. If you understand it, if you look into the solar systems, a black hole sucks all the light within it, and it gives nothing back in return. Many people are like black holes. It's all about them. It's not about Jesus. But it is all about Jesus. <laughs> in him we live and move and have our being. I find my fulfillment. I, I find my joy. I find my peace. I know what it is to be tormented. I know what it is to be, to be twisted in the mind, in the hearts, in the thoughts, to be manic depressant. I lived there all of my life until I hit 19. When Christ came inside and all of a sudden I was not a new, I was not the old, I was a new person. <laughs> And through my walk with the Lord, I've been like this, up and down, up and down. Because I began to get into that realm where all of a sudden God began to reveal himself to me to such an extent to where I... Have you ever been, have you ever had such a touch of God? You said, oh Lord, please don't give me no more. It is too much, I can't handle it. And you get into that place to where those who live in this world, they cannot relate with what you're talking about because their feet are on the ground and their mind is on earthly things. And yet the scripture says, if you be dead with Christ, because it's impossible cool, to go any higher to the extent that you are dead to what you want. See, it's in my heart, it burns, and even this week, almost every night, I'm almost afraid to lay my head down because I know I'm going to have visitations of the Lord. 
And it's not something I work up within my mind, my will, and my emotions. I'm not hyping myself up even though you do get what you say. For your tongue is the rudder of your boat. You are walking in the realm that which you've been saying. And if you say, God doesn't hear me, God doesn't answer me, God doesn't reveal himself to me, God never shows up, that's exactly what you have because you are not agreeing with what he says. For he says, draw nine to me and I'll draw nine to you. And I've discovered through the years, it's broken my heart. Because I want to take people into a higher place. It's not about Mike Yeager. It's about your relationship with Christ. For even before the fall of man, God walked with his creation. Adam and his wife walked with God. Until they committed sin. And what came in then was a desire to fulfill self. Christianity is not a desire to get what you want. It's a longing to do what he says. To follow him. To be possessed by him. To be consumed with his love, his mercy, his goodness, his peace, his long suffering, his gentleness, his faith, his holiness, the fear of the Lord, the divine nature to become partaker of that because I was made in his likeness, in his image. I was made, it's so amazing what Jesus said in John 17. I'm here this morning. I want to challenge you to begin to go to a higher place. And as long as you've got a hold of this world, you cannot see what God has for you. Esau was to inherit the blessing of his father Isaac, but because of the fact he was caught up in the natural and he sold it for a bowl of porridge. But Jacob came along, and he was a conniver. He deceived his brother because he, he deceived his father because he wanted the blessings more than any other. <laughs> See, you got to be desperate. you got to be hungry. you got to be thirsty. And in the world that we live in today, there's very little true spiritual hunger. For people are hungry for the presence, but they're not hungry for the one from whom the presence comes. I know what his presence is like. I know what his love is like. I know what his voice sounds like, the gentle voice of my precious shepherd. I hear his voice. He leads and he guides. Yesterday as we were ministering in the church up in Allenstown, the Spirit of God came in. I was simply going to lay my hands upon their head, but the Spirit of prophecy came upon me. And I began to go down and begin to speak specifically to each one. And the Holy Ghost fell and they were weeping and crying and shaking. And they said to me after the service, we've never had anybody be so precise and read our mail to such an extent. And I said it's simply because of the fact that I'm seeking him with all my heart. God is not a respecter of people. He's calling you to a higher place. This week as I fell asleep, all of a sudden I could hear and feel the heart of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And in my sleep I began to weep and cry because he was looking upon his bride. And he saw how sick they are, how lost and how confused. How messed up and how self-centered. I'm not condemning you because I believe by the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is about to come as a consuming fire and he's about to burn out of you every evil desire. I believe with all my heart the Holy Ghost is about to come. He's about to set you free. He's about to transform you like he did to Saul, to a Paul, like a Peter, a fisherman, into an apostle of God. See, remember, he's the one who molds and shapes and forms. It's not a matter of the flesh. It's a moving of the spirit. So in this dream, I was weeping and crying. And yet I have so many wonderful experiences. You need to know, I run into a lot of people who want experiences, want experiences, want experiences. And I believe in the supernatural because it's throughout the whole Bible. When the Lord appeared and Enoch walked with God and was not, that's where I want to live. I want to be like Abel. I want to offer a better sacrifice than the flesh. I want to give my best and my all upon the altar. I want to be like Enoch who walked with God. I want to be like Noah who heard the voice of the Lord, moved with fear with his three sons to the 
the saving of his household. I want to be like Abraham who called him to come out of the city of the Chaldeans and to live in a tent in the wilderness with his son Isaac and his son Jacob who were heirs together of the promises. I want to be like these men. I want to know that God of the great I am that Joseph knew and Moses knew, that Joshua and Caleb and the, and the judges of old. I want to know God like Samuel did and David who killed the lion and the bear and overcame Goliath. I want to, and you can. It's so amazing. <laughs> If you want to walk with God, there's no devil in hell, according to Romans chapter 8, that can separate you from the love of Jesus. But you got to get your eyes off of what your flesh wants, and you got to crucify it. Amen. You got to die to the old before the new can come forth. But a lot are trying to resurrect the old. But he says he'll not put new wine into old wineskins. You got to forsake the thoughts and the ideals, the emotions, the opinions, the attitudes that are not of Christ. It's something you have got to do. And the enemy would come and tell you, oh, what's the use? It won't do any good if you die to the flesh. I want you to know that's a lie because it's only if you die can the resurrection of Jesus shine forth in your life? Last night I went to bed. I was just praising God. I went to bed early. Sometimes the Lord has me to go to bed early because it's a time of appointment because in the book of Job, he says he'll speak to us in deep sleep. <laughs> and so I went to bed early and I cannot explain. I went to bed, but I was up all night. Now I know that some of you are going to have a hard time believing this. But I went to bed, but I was up all night, and I was in the heavens. And I was singing, you should have heard me say, I was singing with the angels and with the saints. And I was listening to myself sing, and the words that were coming out of my mouth just flowed like a river. It was all in tune and rhyme. What a voice the Lord had given me. And I was singing and I was one with the Father, the Son, the Spirit. I was one with the saints. I was one with the angels. And we were just having the time of our life. And we were all praising God together. And there was no transparency. There was no overhead projection. We just all knew exactly the same words to speak. And we were singing and praising God. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, my wife shows up. And she steps in and everybody got quiet. And then she began to sing in tongues this beautiful song. And out of my mouth became the interpretation in perfect harmony. It blew me away. I said, Lord, if that ever happens in public, they'll know it's you and not me. It was amazing. I told her, I said, baby, I said, you were singing in such a beautiful language and I was singing the words, the interpretation. I said, but don't do that yet because I'm not quite there. I, it has to happen when I'm asleep. <laughs> you understand, there is such a place that God wants you to go. In the old covenant, he says, I will give you the desires of your heart. Did you notice he did not put upon that any particular particular dimension and even though it says in the book of James you have not because you ask not and when you ask you ask amiss that you might consume it upon your lust so right there will tell you the reason why many prayers are not answered because they're self-centered and they're full of I I I I but don't you realize the I of self must die that the great I am might arise did you not know the prophecy of old came not by the will of men, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost? Don't you know it's the spirit of the living God that will come into your mouth and he'll cause his word to come forth like a hammer that will break the rocks and like a fire that will consume the stubble? Don't you know that God has called you to arise to a higher dimension and to a greater place? But you must do what he said in Hebrews chapter 12 in order to experience Hebrews chapter 11. You must lay aside the sin which so easily besets you. You must take your eyes off of yourself, off of your feelings and your emotions. 
You got to get your eyes off of what the world says. We're not created the Lord spoke to me you're not made to read the news you're made to make it you're not to be moved by the circumstances of life the mountains should not hinder you you ought to speak to them but your heart has got to be right for that is what determines what God can do. For he even said that I was looking for a man whose heart was after me. And he found it in a young shepherd boy by the name of David. And David's heart was right with God. You can tell all you got to do is read the Psalms. As he began to write, and this is the old covenant, this is not the new. The blood of Christ had not yet been shed, and the Holy Ghost had not yet been poured out and given. But all of a sudden, here David is, for even as it was in the old, it can be in the new. That is, you begin to cry out to Jesus with everything inside. You're going to have to press your way through the veil of the flesh to enter into the spirit as you begin to push your way, even as a woman with the issue of blood who needed healing for her physical body. Today we've made it too easy. People can run to the doctors. I'm not attacking them, but I'm just telling you, there is a better way if you would pay the price and take a hold of the garment of Jesus. He would heal you with his virtue. This is for me. This is for you. This is for all of the bride, for all those who would believe. It's not a message of demeaning. I have not yet apprehended that for which I've been apprehended. But I do know this. This one thing I do. I got to forget those things which are behind. Now when I talk about forgetting those things which are behind, I'm not talking just about my sin, my shame, my immorality, the stupid things which I have done. I am talking about even those things that I think I have been successful in. I'm even talking about maybe what God has done for me in the past to where I do not brag and boast about, look what the Lord has done in me. For you see, he'll share his glory with no man. Many people do not understand they're operating in the same spirit that Lucifer did. See, Lucifer was not happy or content in his position in the heavens. He wanted to be something better, something higher, something more important. He wanted everybody's eyes to be upon him. And that's what we call pride. And many people do not understand even their prayers are filled with the stink of the filth of the flesh because all they want is self-satisfaction, self-recognition, self-affirmation. But it's not about you. It's all about him. When I had that experience, even though you can read about it in the book of Revelation, and as I looked and I seen the Father and the saints and the angels looking up to my right, and I saw the Lamb of God, and every eye within creation was upon the Lamb that was slain to shed his blood to redeem me. We know without a shadow of a doubt, because I have been there myself in times past, that sometimes we pamper our problems. We exalt them, we magnify them, because we're using them to try to get attention and what we would call love and self-pity. I know what I'm talking about. All my whole life I was filled with the pity of self. And to me, I thought it was a wonderful smell. But to those all around me, they know it stunk. Just like somebody who has B.O. or who has lut gas. To them, there's nothing wrong with it, but everybody else gags. Sometimes you're so deep in the forest, you cannot see the trees. But when I gave my heart to Christ as I seek the Lord, I begin to back up in the realm of the Spirit. I begin to look upon myself and I say, Lord, did I really act that stupid? Did I really use my problem, my circumstance? Many preachers raise finances by declaring their poverty. And yet Jesus never did it. <laughs> he simply said to Peter, go down and catch a fish, open its mouth, and there'll be gold in it. I had a dream last night, it's kind of strange. I was ministering to a person, and they were standing in front of me. This is really strange. And they had a financial need. I said, dear sister, open your mouth. I reached in and pulled out a pure gold coin. And I said, here, now go pay your bills. And he said, out of their own mouth, I will meet their needs. Out of your own mouth will come death and life, health and healing, 
Poverty or prosperity? Pastor Mike, how in the world can I get to the place to where everything I say, everything I feel? See, the Lord had to take me to a place to where he put me under a microscope and he began to show me I was not leaning to the understanding of my mind. He had to take me to the place where he said, I want you to bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Every, I'm not there yet. Oh, but it's getting exciting. What a life to live, for Jesus said, I am come that you might have life, and life more abundantly. He anointeth my head with all, my cup runneth over. See, if you're tormented, if you are full of fear, if you're full of pain and hurt, if you're full of this world, if you're full of the cares of this time, if you're full of all of these things, it's simply because these are the things that you're playing on the record of your mind. It's like your record is on a record player, and it's a, a groove dug into it, and it just repeats itself over and over. I saw the Lord take a record off of the record player, and I saw him slam it to the ground and break it and he says it's time for people to stop putting the same old record in their mind stuck in the same old rut for 10 20 30 50 60 years it's time to break the record it's time to come up out of the ditch it's time to go to a higher place it's time to die to the flesh don't be like the Israelites. They had seen the mighty works of God, his outstretched arm. He split the Red Sea. They walked across on dry, sod land. They got there. The manna came. The fire came. The water from the rock. They remember the supernatural deliverance that he had done for them from Pharaoh. The Lord spoke to me. He said, son, even as I delivered my people in the land, out of the land of Egypt, I'm about to deliver my church out of the hands of Pharaoh with a mighty outstretched arm. He said, my people are not yet, re yet ready for what I'm about to do. For a lot of the things they have been taught have been simply cotton candy. And I, I, I've known that, not being critical people. But I knew that in my heart, sometimes we're just ahead of our time. There's, there, you know, technology-wise, there's people, if you look back, like Tesla, he was a German scientist. The man was way ahead of his time, and now they're discovering things that he said was true. There's people in the spirit, you are, you're ahead of your time. And the world wasn't just ready for you yet. But I perceive in my heart, he's about to wind things up. He's about to release. I believe with all my heart, there are John the Baptist and Elijah's out there. I believe there's men of God that are in obscurity because God told them to stay there. But I believe that we're going to hear the voice of the Lord calling forth the prophetic voice that is true. We had a woman yesterday in the meeting. She began to weep and cry. And she said, I'm sorry to say, she says, I have despised prophecy. She said, I used to love prophecy, but I despise it because the things they're saying to us are so lighthearted and, 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 and so fluffy. There's no depth. There's no dealing with the heart. And she was weeping and crying, but I, I, I knew in my heart that her day of weeping is about over with because God's about to show up on the picture once again. I did not know this. I was speaking to a prophet of the Lord, Dr. Dan Bowler, the other day. He had seen and he had, uh, his wife had watched the video that we had uh, recorded two weeks ago. And he said to me, did you know there was another prophet of God? He's now 87. Back in 1975, the Lord told him, you're going to live to see the day when I am going to separate the goat from the sheep. And he said to him, this was back in 19, I think it was 75, I'm trying to get the exact prophecy. He said, the year that I will separate the goat from the sheep is 2012. See, we're talking about the harlot church, and we're talking about the holy church. Now, I'm going to say something here if you're offended. It's good because the Bible says that if you are his child, he'll chastise you. I thought the harlot church was simply those who have taken religion and organized it to make money off of it. Now, I do not deny that the ox is worthy to partake of the corn that he treadeth out, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. I do not deny that. We should live off of the gospel. If we give you spiritual things, what is it that you give us, natural or carnal? But a lot of people 
are living like kings. They're living high in the hog. The only problem I have with that is I open up my Bible, the only, I never saw prophets of God, apostles. I never saw true men and women of God live so much higher than others to where they have chauffeurs and big cars and expensive houses. I'm not attacking them. They're going to stand before God. So I thought that was the harlot church. Sealed my lips, not attacking them. And the Lord spoke to me and said, no, son. He said, the harlot church is anybody who confesses they're Christians and yet it's money that controls them. It's money that determines what they do. Because I told them, you cannot serve God and mammon, but they do not believe me. He said, the harlot church are the ones who are going to be bought and sold. The harlot church are the ones who are giving their life, their mind, their time, their energy to the physical things of the world, not in order that they can have to give to others, because that's what he said. He said that you that have, give to others, that there be no lack in the body. And I'm not talking about people who lay around and don't work, because the scripture says if a man does not work, neither should they eat. Even a widow that you help, if you look in the book of Timothy, is a hard-working woman. She's not laying around watching soap operas. She's not laying around gossiping and spending time on vain amusements. But she is busy taking care of the saints. Is this too strong for you? I hope it's not. Because God wants to take you to a higher place. You know, Pastor Mike, it hurts. It always hurts when we lay on the operating table and the Holy Ghost wants to cut out the things inside of us. He wants to deworm us from the parasites that are sucking out our energy and our life. And so many people have no joy. They have no peace. They do not have the abundant life. It's simply because they're not seeking God with all of their heart, their soul, and their mind. We'll take a breather. <sighs> that was session one. Now we're going into session two. <laughs> Hope you got your seatbelts on. We're getting ready for a mighty move. See, God wants to set you free. For you can belong to nobody but him. He is a jealous God. He said, I have no other gods before me. And people do not realize that what they pour their life into. Now, like I said, it's not saying you shouldn't work all these years when I love Christ. I, you, if you know me, if you're ever around me, you know that I do not have idle hands. I'm always working, always Striving, always seeking God. What more do you want me to do? Because the natural and the spiritual come together. I wish it could all just be the la-la land of the spiritual. No physical work, no physical labor. And yet we know that Jesus up to he was 30 was a carpenter. So there's physical things that God requires for you to do. You know what I could not understand? I have told people this through the years, and yet there's such a stubbornness inside. It's the immorality of the carnal nature. I know, can I tell you this? I'm telling you, listen once again. Maybe this time you'll catch it. Tell somebody, maybe you'll get it this time. I'm going to tell you once again. I'm going to repeat myself. Because when I was a baby Christian and I was raised in Catholicism and thank God they didn't really teach us anything or maybe I wasn't listening. I got born again. I opened up my Bible. I discovered it said I'm supposed to lift holy hands. It said I was supposed to sing to the Lord. It said I was supposed to give thanks to him and everything. It also told me that I need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and I need to speak in tongues. It also told me that I need to gather together with the saints and even so much more as I see the day approaching. It also said that all that I had belonged to him and I didn't even think about the tithe because I said, Lord, you bought me with your blood. So as a young baby, born anew, little incy Christian, I began to do. I began to do. So I would go, when I did find a church, 
I did not stand in the back and watch and stare. When they were praising God, I lifted my hands no matter how I feel. And when the time came to dance, how do we know when it's time to dance? When we sing, I will dance like David danced. I will dance like David danced. Now get a hold of this. This is a lack of faith. We're singing, I will dance like David danced. And people sit there like a rock. And they say, God! Why won't you talk to me? He said, I already have. You won't listen. I said, dance. Well, I wasn't raised to dance. That's not my character. Excuse me? Aren't you born again? Aren't you washed in the blood? Doesn't Jesus live on the inside? Aren't you a child of the king? Don't you have a heart like David did? I just don't dance. Well, don't worry. God won't talk to you. He's already turned his back. He's waiting for you to say, I'll do what your word says. Well, Pastor Mike, I'm just too embarrassed. Well, God is embarrassed of you too. Because he wants to brag about you to the angels. He's how. Gabe, you're looking. Michael, come here. You see that little squirrely guy by the name of Mike Yeager? He just got born again, and he's practicing and doing my word. For it says, be a doer of the word and not a hearer only, deceiving your own selves. I told him to dance. He don't feel like dancing. He's sick as a dog. I, he don't want to go to church, but he's going anyways. I'm telling you, God wants to deliver you. But he can't until you decide to do what he said. Pastor Mike, what if, do I have to lift my feet up all the way to my head? Well, if you did, it'd have to be the Holy Ghost. <laughs> no, begin to shuffle. Just do the Holy Ghost shuffle. Y'all can do the Holy Ghost shuffle. <laughs> you, I, I, I'm telling you right now, I, I tell you what. Lord willing, when the book comes out and you start to read about all the experiences that we've had, and I've not exhorted them, I've had so many, so many. Every week goes by when I have a supernatural visitation of God, either an answer to prayer, a healing, a manifestation, something happens. But it's not because I'm so intelligent and so spiritual. I, I, I just do what he says. He says, make a joyful sound. I make a joyful sound. And when I stop doing what the word says, then I stop getting results. It's like you buying, and we did. I bought a $400 one of these running machines. I don't know why I haven't lost a lot of weight with it. You know why? Because I don't get on it. Yeah, Pastor Mike, I've got a Bible, and I go to church once in a while. And, and, and you know, I, love, I do love God. You love God, huh? You really love God? It says, and this is love that we obey his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Pastor Mike, what's happening? God is doing surgery on us. See, that's one reason I stopped traveling to churches because they didn't want to hear this message. I, I, people love such a light-hearted, oh, you're a child of the king, you're an overcomer, you're a conqueror. People say, Pastor Mike, why don't you preach the great revelation of who we are in Christ? Let's talk about what you're doing in Christ. What are you doing in Christ? It's not just saying, I'm a child of the king, I, I'm an overcomer, I, I love him with all my heart. It's doing what he says. I don't go out of here thinking it's your job to change anybody else. You know what blew me away when I had this visitation of the Lord the other day, when I saw the heavens bursting forth into turmoil that you can't believe, it took away my breath, and I could hardly, I mean, the people with me on the hill, and some of you there were with me, we couldn't even talk after that. And the Lord spoke to me afterwards. He said, son, he, because people's hearts were filled with great fear. The saints' hearts were filled with fear. The sinners' hearts were filled with fear. Now, it's a different type of fear. <clears throat> I said, Lord, what were you doing? And this is what he said to me. He said, son, 
He said, what is the beginning of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding? I said, the fear of the Lord. He said, this generation is so lacking fear. They just think I'm a big old papa in heaven. I just take them up on my lap and burp them. <laughs> just give them whatever they want. They're disobedient. They're rebellious. They speak against authority. They are lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. They want this world and heaven. He said, for faith to really grow and produce, for me to manifest myself the way I desire to, I must first bring them back into the fear of the Lord. Because they that are forgiven of much loveth much. That's why Mary Magdalene broke open her alabaster box and poured it out upon Jesus and was not like Judas who said, oh, that could have been used to feed the poor. But he said not because he loved the poor, but because he was a thief. I'll tell you right now by the Spirit of God, it's a shame that a lot of people don't have discernment. A lot of the preachers in the pulpit today are nothing but thieves. They don't care about your soul. They're just going to tickle your ears and tell you what you want to hear to make you feel good, to give to them what they want. I am not really interested in your money. Though where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Y'all getting something? I know we didn't, but we did. As we were going to Mark 11, 23, 24, remember? Did y'all get there? Now, I won't be back tonight to preach this message for you, but Brother Angel, we're going to tag team, brother. Here, come on, tag team. There you go, Brother Angel. <laughs> have at it. Who said, by the time you all get done, we won't have nobody left. Oh, we'll have people who want God more than their nightly sleep. They'll want God more than the physical. They'll want God because, hello, we are like vapor. We're here one minute and then we're gone. Are you going to sell your soul for garbage and rubbish that is just going to pass away? What are you going to, what are you going to live your life for? I'm going to live it for Jesus. You know what? I don't, I don't want to moonwalk across the finish line. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to skip like a little girl going across the finish line. I don't want to crawl like a turtle or like a snail. I want to be like a burning, blazing fire. I want to be like a locomotive that has its engines fully filled with steam. I want the horn of the glory of God coming out of my mouth. Woo! Here I come, woo, the little train that could. I want to come across that with every bit of steam. I want the angels to be clearing out of the way. Here he comes, locomotive number, M-I-K-E. How about you? Do I have any takers? Say, oh, well, Pastor Mike, we'll ride your caboose. Excuse me, you can't. We're, going <laughs> We're taking a little break where we can hit session number three. Pastor Mike, what kind of service is this this morning? It's a deliverance service. I'm trying to cast devils out of you. Sometimes it feels good when the devils come out. Fear, worry, anxiety, self-centeredness, self-loving, self-seeking, self-greed. Stupid stuff of this world. Worms that have entered into your heart and they're eating you from the inside out because your priorities are all wrong. See, Paul tried to wake up the Corinthian church. They were extremely carnal. There's hope for us. 
They were fussing and fighting over the food. They were fussing and fighting over this. And don't be afraid, so were the apostles. Who's going to be the greatest? And here James and John connived, and he got alone with Jesus, and they brought their mother, and they said, Oh, will you grant to my sons that one can sit on the left and one can sit on the right? And Jesus says, You have no idea what you're asking for. That's not my decision. That's my father's. But he said, Those who want to be greatest in the kingdom must become the servants of all. <laughs> See, I'm, it's so simple. Just got to stop thinking. You know what? We went out there to White Horse Christian Center. God really moved, didn't he, ladies? Come on, brothers, wasn't that awesome? Did you notice there's something about their pe them people out there? A lot of them are just simple-minded. What do you mean? They're jumping. They're dancing. They're running. They're shouting. They act like a bunch of fanaticals. Why would they do that? Because they're in love with Christ. What you love is what you go after. What you love determines who you are. You are what you love. Don't look around. You are. Some people love clothes. Some people love cars. Some people love houses. Why do you think has not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith and heirs of the king? Yeah, but Abraham was wealthy, Pastor Mike. Yeah, and he lived in a tent. He didn't have no big castle. He could have. He lived in a tent because it was just a place to lay his head. See, Jesus really wants to help. Now, what does he say in verse 24? He says, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive, and you shall have. Let's look. We're going to close here in just a couple minutes. But look over here in the Gospel of John. And by the way, I guess we're going to be eating. Did anybody bring any food? How, how many of you brought food today with you? Let me say hands. Oh, two ladies brought food, and, and Susie brought food. Nancy, you brought food. Well, I don't care if there's a lot of food back there. That's not the issue. This is what we tell you. We'd love to have you eat with us, but you ought to bring a dish. You'll get it. Pastor Mike, we ain't got no food to make. We'll give you some food, and you can make something with it. <laughs> Pretty soon they're going to call me drill sergeant, aren't they? <laughs> remember that? And remember, we were in the middle. Remember, remember boot camp, brother? Yes, sir. Whoa, man, it was tough. tough. Woo! Tough. Man, and if we back sassed the sergeant or the petty officer, we were in big trouble. trouble. <laughs> Say, I'm in the army now. Come on! I'm not in the army. You better get in the army. We're the army of God. Go ahead, just flex your muscles and let the devil tremble. <laughs> Let the devil drop. Say, watch out, devil. Here I come. <laughs> Ready or not. Woo, I'm going to stop on your ugly face. <laughs> Sister Nancy's always talking about, she just wish she could grab the devil and just whip up on him. <laughs> you can in the spirit, but I'm sorry, he's already been defeated. <laughs> Jesus already overcame principalities and powers. Look there in John chapter 14. I'm going to read these scriptures to you very quickly. In verse 3, John, oh, excuse me, John chapter 14 and verse 13. And whatsoever shall ask, whatsoever you shall say, whatsoever, whatsoever, you shall ask in my name, that will I, that will I, that will I, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified. Where? Who's going to be glorified? In the Son. Not you, not, he'll not share his glory with anyone. You know, I say this in love. So many of us, we do so many things to try to get people's attention because we want them to think we're really, we're really something. Like you're the cat's meow. And we're nothing. You understand that? Stop trying to be something. You're nothing. When you get to thinking you're something, then you're in trouble. Don't be, don't try to be somebody. Just simply make Jesus everything. And when you'll make Jesus everything, you'll be amazed at what he'll do with you. Because 
See, remember, he even tells us, he says, do not put a novice into office lest the adversary gets an advantage over him. Well, if, he, if Paul told Timothy then that, that, then how much more us? God is not going to want to, I'm totally convinced many people who are in high positions, what we call the church, are not there by the Holy Ghost. They're there because they're good talkers, they're good performers. They're not living holy lives. They're not living consecrated lives. They're not living separated lives. They're living lives full of luxury. But look at the apostles. Jesus, one man, he said to the man, said, I want to be your disciple. He said, well, the son of man has nowhere to lay his head but a rock. Well, God, don't expect me to. I've heard people say that God wants his people to have the best. What? Wasn't Jesus the... Well, he became poor, Pastor Mike, that I might be made rich. Rich in what? Not the things of this world, but the splendors of heaven. <laughs> Listen, when you really see Jesus in all of his glory and all of his amazing love, you won't want the things of this world, not one iota. If you have a house, who cares? And if you have a car that gets you there, wonderful. And if you don't, you won't complain. When you really get caught up. How many have ever been really just so caught up in Jesus? That's all you could think about. Think about those days. Wasn't that the time of your greatest growth in the things of the Spirit? When you were just so caught up in Jesus, all you could do was sing, all you could do was praise, all you could do was talk about Him all the day. Isn't that where God wants to take you back into your childhood of your Christianity? But this time you won't be shallow, your roots will go deep, so when the wind blows, you won't fall over. says, if you love me, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. See the connection? He'll give you whatever you ask, keep his commandments. Now we're going to talk about what he's talking about. Verse 17, verse 7 of chapter 15. If you abide in me, my word abides in you. You shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Now here's the problem. Most people are not abiding in Christ and the word is not abiding in them. The, the word is just... The word is just second thought. Well, if I, 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 I spent a little time reading my Bible today. No, no. See, you haven't yet got the revelation. I will tell you once again, I've told you this before. You will never come out of your wilderness until you understand that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. You are not coming out of your wilderness. You will die in your wilderness until you realize you live by this book. This is the voice of God. And no, I'm not angry with you. I just want you to experience what I do. Man, I have so much joy. <laughs> Oh, I have so much peace. I know what he means. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Well, Pastor Mike, you must be doing good financially. Oh, I am blessed with all blessings in heavenly places. <laughs> it must be because you feel physically fine. Danny always asked to me, he says to me, first thing he sees me in the morning, he hasn't got it yet. He said, Dad, how you feeling? I said, don't ask me what I feel, ask me what I believe. <laughs> I don't care. I know it's hard to believe. I'm walking around this place early this morning with the other men in the church. Way back, I had ripped the kneecap off of my knee. I mean, I busted it loose. I took a hold of the word, took about two to three weeks. God healed my kneecap. I was on my way. But guess what? While I was walking this morning, I felt that kneecap trying to twist out again. You know what? I, how many people I told? Not one. And now it's completely made whole. Why? Because I don't care what my body says. I'm so glad I got a wife who doesn't look at me and say, I just don't feel like you love me. <laughs> She's never said it to me once. Hallelujah. 
See, it's never told me to prove that I love her. Hallelujah. Oh, that's good. See, that makes me happy. Man, whoa, I'm so happy I'm married to a woman whoa, who knows how to look to God and she's not trying to get her joy from me. If you abide in me, my, and you got a wife like that too. If you, come on, brother, say amen. amen. I didn't hear a loud shout though. Amen. <laughs> come on, say amen, Sandy. <laughs> I'm going to pick on you a little bit here, sister. Can I pick on you? No, no, I won't. <laughs> she said, go ahead. And if you abide in me, my word abides in you, shall ask what you wear. Herein is my Father glorified. Listen, that you bear much fruit. Oh, but Pastor Mike, I can't. I'm so busy trying to get everybody else to have fruit. Well, now you're in trouble because you're trespassing. <laughs> we discovered, Star, that ain't good, is it? We dare not trespass. We dare not trespass on anybody else's property. It's not my job to make you produce fruit. The caretaker, he's going to want to come to prune. Now, he'll do it through the words I speak, but he's the one who does the work. He said, as the Father has loved me, so I also loved you. Continue my love. He says, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Now, I cannot explain this to you, and these are one of these areas I'm walking on thin ice, but I will tell you right now, if you, and I'm just going to make this statement, you study it in the Amplified, if you do not obey the commandments of Christ, you are not abiding in his love. That's heavy. See, it sounds really light. It's heavy. It's heavy. You are not abiding in his love if you don't keep his command. But why would I keep his commandments? Because you do what you love. I love his commandments. How'd you get that way, Pastor Mike? By the Holy Ghost. See, Jesus lives in me. He loves his Father's will. He said, I've come to do my Father's will, and he's inside of me, and when he rises up and he slips his hands into my hands, he puts his face in my face, he puts his feet in my feet, he's just not abiding in a little part of my innermost being that I let him out on Sundays, but if I let him out every day, all of a sudden it's Christ in me, and now I love, I love to praise him. I love to praise him. I love to praise him and lift up his holy name. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. I love to praise him. Woo! I'm time in the heavens and we're praising God all night long, man. What a party! We're having a party! Holy Ghost party. And the party doesn't stop. <laughs> I'm having a party! Do you have anybody here that loves parties? Oh, Pastor Mike. My middle name is Eeyore. <laughs> you know, a lot of people, they act like Eeyore. What was he? He was the donkey. On uh, Christopher Winnie the Pooh, Eeyore. Say, thank God I'm not an Eeyore, or you know what? <laughs> Did y'all get that? I'm not an Eeyore, or you know what? <laughs> I'm a child of the king! Okay, we're going to go into session number four. Chapter 16, verse 23. And in that day you shall ask me nothing... Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever, say whatsoever, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto I have asked nothing in my name, and you shall receive that your joy, your joy, your joy may be full. At that, verse 26, at that day, you shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. Okay, so what do we ask for? What is it now? We've been talking about you can have the desires of your heart. See, they wanted a king. They got a king. I hear women complain about the husbands they married, and yet you got what you wanted. Well, that's not what I really wanted. <laughs> well, why didn't you have more discernment? Well, I wasn't saved. Well, then God will have mercy on you. He can still change them if you'll do it the right way. Listen, I want to bring that sister we had preaching at this woman's conference. 
Wow. She was an African-American sister. I can't remember, Redeeming Love Church or something. Wow, older sister. She got up there, and I mean, I'm in the back. See, I, I've been in some of the sessions, but I was trying to recover to drive home because I was going through vertical and physical problems. I was driving that big old bus. I didn't want to tell the ladies until I got them back, and thank God we got home safe. <clears throat> I was, I'm telling you, I was so sick, I could hardly see where I was going, and I had to drive that puppy. I didn't have no other driver. I did it by faith. The Lord spoke to me and said, I want those ladies out there. Didn't have the money. Had to use the credit card. Thank God it's going to be paid off. Had to pay for a lot of them that get hotel rooms, not complaining, the Lord told me to. I'm telling you what, man, I was so stinking sick, I couldn't, I, I, I couldn't see straight. Literally, I could not see straight. I was this, and I had diarrhea, and, 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 and man, I'm telling you what, y'all know what I'm talking, some of you have gone through this lately. <clears throat> I puked so hard the night before, sitting on a toilet, I literally, my throat was pure raw. My throat hurt so much, I couldn't even drink coffee. And you know how many of you know I like coffee. I couldn't hardly drink anything. I'm dry. Do you understand? I'm in that bus, man, and, and, you know, I just got my license, and I'm not in the natural very good driver anyway, so my family says. Amen. I'm driving this bus, man. I'm going, I can see, I can see. I can think, I can think. Help me, God, help me. Help me, God. You don't understand. I'm fighting. I'm fighting all the way out there. I'm fighting the fit. And then we didn't know how to turn off the heater. So the hot air is blowing in my face the whole way out. Man, whew, Jesus. And I'd, I'd get in a little bit of fear. I'd say, oh, God, please. I don't want to kill these ladies. Their husbands will kill me. Uh, oh. Lord, help me get them home. Oh, God, help me get them home. So I go all the way out there. But anyways, I'm sitting in this meeting. And his precious black sister. Oh, I wish she was here right now. Woo! Did she preach the truth? She told those women how they could see a revival with their men. But when we got home, how many of them did it? See, the Bible says, listen, hearing a good sermon ain't going to change you. You got to do it. That's right. That's right. Revival is when you do what the word says. So what is it we should pray? See, God says, whatever you ask, why would he do that? Because you're going to expose what you're all about. You start asking for houses. And I'm not saying you shouldn't have a house to live in. No, 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 no. But it's not something you go after. Fame, jewelry, wealth. That is all. You know what Paul said? I count it all but dung. You know what dung is? Dung is poop. <laughs> I told my sons this years ago, and I say this in love. I said, most of the preaching today is like having two pieces of homemade bread with a cow pie in the middle. Because it doesn't tell you to die to self doesn't teach you how to forsake this world doesn't tell you that you have a cross to carry that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory you know how many people tell me they're caught into the ministry but it's money that determines what they do and I say this in my heart Lord unless you get a hold of them they're not going to go nowhere. And if they do, it's the devil that's going to use them. Because the love of money is the root of all evil. Verse 20, chapter 17. Not a prayer for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be what? Verse 21, chapter 17. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. Why? That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them, as thou hast loved me. 
There is the absolute, complete, ultimate conclusion of where we are headed for right now. This is what it was all about from the beginning of time, that we might become one with God. In his nature, in his character, in his disposition, in his attitude, in his thoughts, in his likes, his dislikes, his loves and his hates. And so what is it that you ask for? Father, I want to be one with you. I want to be one with you. You know what? If I didn't have that hope, I'd leave this earth. That's why years ago, the Lord spoke to me. He had us build this church. But I was in the building Brother Angel, yes, I was in the building my own kingdom. Mm -hmm. And the Lord told me. So you know what I did? You know what I did, Mary? I ran the opposite way. I shouldn't have ran for the opposite way. I should have just fell on my face and repented. But I ran the opposite way. I said, okay, if I'm trying to build my own kingdom, I don't want my own kingdom. I'll kill it. I'll stop it. And I did. I shut it down. I said, if this thing's about Mike Yeager, I don't want it. Because Mike Yeager, wow, he ain't worth saving. And I have the revelation, it's not about me. It's not about you. You think it's about you. Well, I got to be special. I got to be important. I got to be somebody. And Jesus said to the Jews who thought the same thing, you see these rocks? My father can raise up seed out of these rocks. I am so privileged. He, you know why he died for me? He just didn't, he died because the father told him. He died because he loved me. But he also knew that if he would give his life for wicked, sinful man, it would be the greatest expression of his love and his compassion. It would declare who he is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, by him rescuing the seed of the devil. You said, that, yeah, yeah, I was a child of the devil. The Bible says I was a child of the devil. The spirit of disobedience lived in me. So what he did, he see, see, the princesses of this world would have known they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So this is, this is so amazing. He tricked the devil. The trickster got tricked. The liar got deceived. Hallelujah. He said, you know what? You took my son and my daughter and you made them my enemies. So I'm going to give you back what you got. Good measure pressed down, shaking together and running over. I'm going to take your sons and your daughters. I'm going to put them in heaven with me. They're going to sit on the throne you wanted. They're going to rule and reign. They're going to judge angels, and they are going to be one with me. And he went, na 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 na. Na 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 na. I'm the devil. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> God gets the last laugh. Laugh at the devil. <laughs> It makes him mad. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Say, Pastor Mike, you're not, so I know, but I love it. Ha, ha. Ha, 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 the devil. Ha, 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 the devil. Oh, I know, sister, she's going offering, offering. Let's receive the offering. I'm not taking 